myself uh, professor Rizwan Hassan Khan from interdisciplinary biotechnology unit I am going to talk about the different level of the structure in protein and its characterization so let us start with the introduction part so we know that uh, the proteins uh, they are uh, linear polymers of amino acids if you look into the structure of the amino acid here you can say the word amino acid itself is being made up of the two component one is known as the amino group and another is the acidic group and uh, this, this is the side chain which will be variable for 20 amino acids which are being coded by the genetic code on although there are more than 120 amino acids are there but uh, only 20 amino acids they are being coded by the uh, genetic codon and they differ in the only side chain say for instance uh, this is having a r1 group and this one is having the r2 group now once there is a, a removal of the water molecule by the condensation reaction and in this way we will be getting in the formation of the peptide bond and in this way the linear structure that is going to be get arise and this is known as a primary structure since the linear structure it will be quite big just like a dna it's also quite big so it cannot be get accommodated in a small volume of the structure of the cell so for that purpose nature has divided a mechanism so that there may be further folding or the compactness in the structure that is required for instance in the case of the protein Further folding that will be required in the form of the alpha helix, beta sheet and the turns. So these are the local structures that are being formed, uh, which are being formed between the interaction between the neighboring amino acid residue. Then further we have a more compact structures like so initially it is started with a big thread like structure. Now it's going to be get condensed and finally it is going to get narrowed down so that it may get accommodated into a, a, a small volume of the cell. Now this uh, tertiary structure which will be having a proper three dimensional structure uh, and it is a, nothing it is an assembly of the a lot of secondary structure like alpha helix and beta structure and uh, generally the tertiary structure that will be required uh, having a three uh, biological activity also but exceptions are always there as uh, we know that uh, uh, most of the enzymes they are proteinaceous in nature but uh, there are the ribozymes which are uh, RNA in nature and although they possess the biological activity likewise uh, tertiary structure is always, always not required uh, in, but in general we can say in 98 percent the tertiary structure that is required for a biological activity so uh, say for instance this is a primary structure it is just open like a structure further it's going to get fold and then it is going to become a compact and in this way we will be getting the compact structure now once if we having a more than one polypeptide chain so this is one this is the another one because uh, just to want to differentiate that and then if they are going to come in close with, uh, contact with each other by the covalent or non-covalent interaction so this may give rise to a quaternary structure and uh, the best example that we can cite it is uh, one is the uh, myoglobin regarding the tertiary structure which is uh, having a single polypeptide chain and the quaternary structure which is a tetrameric in nature the best example is hemoglobin and uh, uh, luckily both the protein they have a th uh, same tertiary structure and uh, they carry they, the function is to carry the oxygen now uh, uh, here again uh, this is a, a simple scheme that is being depicted over here that uh, you just see the bead like structure that is being shown uh, it's a just like thread like structure then further we get a folding like structure just like a coil that is going to get formed and then we will be having a helix like structure so the and the sheet like structure and then the distant uh, of, uh, amino acid they are going to come in close contact uh, and uh, then they are going to form a, a quaternary structure, uh, uh, a tertiary structure and then finally we will be having a quaternary. Uh, as we know that uh, as I, I, I was saying that primary structure means uh, the language of the protein is written in 20 alphabets just like uh, the English alphabet, uh, English language is having 26 as alphabet and then from the alphabets we can make a words like uh, from uh, for instance mug, self, uh, sun, cat, fig etc. So the words here the analogy will be like that that um, once we have the uh, primary structure now the formation of the secondary structure they are just simply uh, acting as a word uh, in terms of the vocabulary 
then uh, uh, the second stage is the sentence so sentence means uh, here we are going to have compact structures just like a math is a fun baby uh, babies are cute i love cat like that so this is going to come under the tertiary structure and further if there is more than one polypeptide chain so then it is going to form a quaternary structure and then we can say it is going to form a paragraph just like a morning or uh, work is a very good exercise it refreshes the mind and body so uh, now further uh, uh, now uh, let's come to about the language as i said uh, the english language is of 26 alphabet and here the we have uh, uh, 20 uh, amnesties and which is being coded by 61 genetic codon there are the three nonsense codons are there so then uh, these amnesties they are being classified uh, in general on the basis of the nature of the uh, side chain group like say for instance if it is uh, having a hydrophobic side chain uh, so in that case uh, the example that is going to fall that is glycine allylene valine leucine isoleucine methionine phenylalanine tryptophan and proline just to remember that that phenylalanine and tryptophan and tyrosine they are the aromatic amnesty residue so whatsoever the optical property that we are going to get in a protein that will be because of the generally uh, these aromatic uh, amino acid residue as well as the peptide bond they also play a crucial role because of the pi, pi transition now further we have a polar side chain uh, group like uh, in that case we'll be having a serine and thyroidine because they are the main target for the glycosylation purpose cysteine tyrosine aspartame and uh, glutamine so they are the polar they will be having a polar side chain so that means they may be having the polarity now the, uh, this is very interesting part of the, because this is uh, here we are going to discuss about the negatively and positively charged amino acid residue uh, and the easy way to remember then you are supposed to make some formulas uh, to just remember like say for instance if you want to remember a uh, hydrophobic amino acid uh, positively charged so just you everybody knows that HAL Hindustan Aeronautic Limited so H stand for histidine A stand for arginine and L stand for uh, lysine and even if you there are the one letter alphabet also in that case you can remember by name rhk r stand for uh, arginine uh, h stand for histidine k stand for uh, lysine so uh, likewise if, if you want to remember sulfur containing amino acid residue long time back there was a, a cricket game uh, uh, that was being played by the, in australia with the name uh, melbourne cricket club that was a very famous club so MCC, mil, uh, methionine, cysteine and cysteine, these are the sulfur containing residue. Likewise, you can also, there are the ways to remember essential, non-essential. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to focus on my topic. So then uh, you should also know what are the negatively charged amino acid residue. Why I'm emphasizing this? Because if you just see whatsoever the communication between the cells that takes place, it is because of the charge-charge interaction. So charge charge interaction is very important. Say for instance, if you just uh, consider the structure of the micelle, micelle also they also just look like a very much uh, uh, structure is same li uh, like of that of the protein. Because in the micelle also you will be having the all the charge residue, uh, they will be uh, on the periphery. While the hydrophobic side chain, they will be buried inside the interior of the protein. Exactly the same phenomena that we get in the protein also. The core of the protein will be having a hydrophobic uh, 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 residues while on the periphery or on the surface of the protein will be having a uh, charge residue and depending on uh, the, uh, which amino acid is present in predominant accordingly you will be having a positively or an overall negatively charged uh, protein. For instance if the protein is uh, having overall positive charge I amino mean, residue in greater number so in that case the protein will be called as a basic protein for instance that is a histone protein histone protein is very common that is and and you can see such a device of the nature because the dna is negative in nature and we want to stabilize the dna so in that case we need a counterbalance so that uh, the positively charge uh, residue they should uh, neutralize that and that make the system stable now uh, going to the next one now coming to the uh, level of the uh, structure as i said in the beginning also uh, the best example that we can cite it's a uh, insulin uh, because uh, we know that mo most of the people they suffer from the diabetes and this is the main 
protein which is culprit for having the uh, diabetes. Now, uh, uh, insulin is having, uh, as you can see, the structure A chain and the B chain. A chain, uh, here uh, in all the cases, you can see there is a polarity that is there. Polarity means there will be head and tail. So, in the protein, will be having the uh, head is equivalent to the N terminal and tail is equivalent to the C terminal. Likewise, in the DNA, we have 5 prime end and the 3 prime end. So, now you can see this is the uh, one chain which is having the of uh, 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 this glycine is the first amino acid residue in the A chain and this is having 21 amino acid residue and the B chain is having 30 amino acid residue so they are link, linked together by a disulfide bond but generally the perception is most of the time the student they give a uh, incomplete definition uh, once they if you ask them to define a primary structure so they always exclude the disulfide bond so just uh, it, it is because of that we have taken the example of the uh, insulin so that uh, you can imbibe in your mind that it is a disulfide bond is also a component of the primary structure with this i will proceed uh, further uh, now uh, the best uh, uh, it is better to sometime uh, if you are explaining that this phenomena to the kids uh, so how come you can explain that the what is the primary structure so the best example that you can cite to the kids if they are the 10th standard that uh, everyone has seen a train so in the train you will be having the uh, one engine and the one the guard compartment and then you will be having the rest of the bogies like S1 coach, uh, AC coach, uh, general coach like that. So uh, you can say the analogy in a way that uh, the um, uh, engine coach is equivalent to the N terminal and the guard coach that is equivalent to the C terminal. So now here we are defining the two extreme of that and in between that whatsoever the compartments are there they are just uh, you can say they are the different amino acid residue and they are forming a linear structure and there, there is a if you if you just see there is a connecting link between the two uh, uh, compartments are there and they are nothing uh, you can say that they are uh, analogous to that of the peptide bond so this is the, the way to, to explain that to the kids because the kids they cannot understand if you are going to uh, tell them in a scientific way now coming to the, uh, the second level of the structure because as I said it is a long structure and you are supposed to put them in a small space just uh, so uh, you are supposed to make it in a more condensed form. Now what is going to get happen this you we are going to talk about the secondary structure where we will be having the uh, carboxyl group uh, we know that the peptide bond is going to will be having a CONH. Now just keep this point in your mind. Now, uh, carboxyl group is going to form a hydrogen bond with the neighboring amino acid residue and in this way you will be having a intramolecular coiling, uh, intramolecular hydrogen bonding as well as the coil that is going to be get generated and in this way you are reducing the size also. This is the main important aspect and in the case of the sheet you will be having the sheet like a structure and a sheet it may be having intra or uh, intra if it is a within the uh, uh, same uh, you are getting the hydrogen bonding so it will be called as a uh, intramolecular uh, uh, and if it is uh, between the different one so it will be the inter now uh, we'll come to the uh, there are the different types of uh, helix that are being formed like say for instance 2 7 3 10 helix uh, 3.6 uh, Helix people they are not very aware about that generally people they have uh, idea about the pi helix or alpha helix they don't know generally it's a pi helix that is more common just like in DNA there are the different types of DNA A, B, C, D, A, E, uh, Z DNA but people uh, in uh, um, general we discuss about the B DNA model likewise so okay so uh, we uh, here we can see this is a 310 uh, uh, alpha helix is there which is will be having 3.6 amino acid residue uh, per turn. Now uh, we will go to the now here you can see as I said uh, you may be having a parallel sheet or anti parallel sheet I, uh, so uh, uh, that here you can make it out uh, if it is making it both the end terminal they are going like this so it is this parallel if the enter one end terminal and see just like in DNA uh, 5 prime end is there and 3 prime end is there so then we can say it is anti parallel likewise see, here we will be having a parallel and anti parallel now uh, the turn is also very important people they are always uh, uh, obscure this because they don't discuss about the turns the turns because they are the small uh, 
uh, they are being formed by the four amnesty residue generally it is there are the small amnesty residue they prefer to reside at the turn site uh, say for instance glycine alanine and especially the proline this is also known as a to be uh, that is also being formed in the turn now with this uh, now we if you go back uh, we had discussed about the linear structure then we talk about it is going to get condensed and then and now it is going to acquire a more compact structure which is known as a tertiary structure and uh, now this is this will be having a biological activity because it will be having a, some binding site or some catalytic site likewise whatsoever the function that is going to be get assigned by the nature so for instance in the case of the uh, myoglobin which is the, the protein which is present in our muscles so they are also uh, responsible for the transport of the oxygen now these uh, myoglobin now you can see these are the different uh, distant amino acid residue they are going to come in close vicinity and then they are forming a, a non covalent interactions and it is because of that uh, we have a rigid structure which is going to perform a biological function again i should say there are the exceptions are there that we will be having a uh, will be having a now this tertiary structure we have discussed now we'll go to the another level uh, i'm just going to skip the, what are the interactions so like hydrogen bonding electrostatic uh, hydrophobic uh, dipole dipole interactions are there and disulfide i'll just go very quickly and uh, now the quaternary structure it will be having the example that we can cite it is a hemoglobin that we have plenty in our uh, body and uh, it is made up of two chain uh, for the quaternary structure it is obligatory to have more than one polypeptide chain now say for instance uh, i always ask the students uh, suppose if you have a in there are that three test tubes are there in one test tube you have a distilled water in one test tube you have a protein and in there you have a dna and you don't know which test tube contains what so what will be the easiest approach the best thing is you can just take a absorption spectra if the there is a protein so you will be getting a, a two lambda max one is at 214 and other is at 280 while in the case of the nucleic acid you will be getting a lambda max around 260 so this is this is the easy way to differentiate between the protein and the, uh, uh, the nucleic acid and in the case of the buffer it will be blank now in the same way there is another approach that can be used uh, that is a uh, uh, fluorescence approach by which you can determine whether the protein contain a phenylalanine tyrosine and tryptophan so these are the spectra that are being shown and this is the fluorescence uh, and then the lorentz method is there for the uh, uh, quantification of the protein this is a destructive method people they generally use it but uh, now n terminal analysis how come you can determine the sequence of the protein i just skip this uh, then the secondary structure you can determine by the various technique like cd is the most common uh, and it is very easy to handle now this is the last uh, slide uh, i'll just conclude that because now that these people they talk about the drug designing what is that for the drug designing each and every cell they have a unique receptor on it and uh, the drug that is supposed to get the entry to, through the, those receptors so in that case uh, this is becomes obligatory to know about the structure of the receptor protein so uh, uh, there are the various methods are there the uh, x-ray crystallography is uh, the one and uh, which is now becoming absolute now and now cryo electron microscopy this is a most demanding one and it is because of that lot of people they are getting a nobel prize also so you are supposed to make a crystal go for a excellent diffraction uh, go for a uh, face problem uh, do, do, do a electron density map and by this you will come to know what is the structure that is there and this is the structure that will be complementary to the drug and then say you can design the drug and that's this is the way which is the approach that is being more than the designing i hope you might have enjoyed the a very short lecture and i am sorry that i was planning to have some models also but uh, uh, anyway just bear with us uh, next time if i am going to join so then i can come along with the, some models also thank you so